Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. Well, it is uh, 23 hours, eh, 12, 23 hours into the 10th day of November 2021. I did not do a observation vlog last night. I was looking into uh, some of the things I wanted to talk about. We we're going to get into a mixed bag of things as we're going deeper into the questions in terms of uh, what's presented out there. And Lionel brings up an interesting point about uh, the metaverse, but I get there's an enormous amount he's kind of missing. And so we're going to cover the areas that are missing. The metaverse has a number of different definitions, depending on how you look at it. Just like communism, socialism, humanism, uh, or any theory. Ugh. There is a general bounding, but then as you get more into the specifics and go into various different types, and depending on who has worked on the philosophy, right, the, the, these are these become the iterations <clears throat> or the fragments uh, that sort of break off and become aspects of the original. So in many ways, you can call them a derivative. Let's so give you an example of a derivative. The original splitting off of the Christian church, the general Christian church, uh, we could say, well, it's based on Christ. Okay. Uh, but the thing is, if you look at carefully, you'll find that the iteration of Christ in terms of the Christian church uh, really begins uh, with the uh, Roman Catholic church at about 1000 AD when it split off from uh, the early Christian church, which, which was at the time Eastern. They wanted to create a Western church, a Western identity, and that's particularly what they did, but they chose to do so uh, in a manner that they, because they never really left paganism. They used their pagan ideals, but they still maintained the pagan ideals, uh, up in, you know, kings and queens and stuff like that, but used it to create an empire that had a Christian face. And so they adopt, they, they changed the theory the understanding of Christianity from one that was peaceful to one uh, where God was wrathful and demanded X amount of tribute and payment in terms of appeasement. And, and this is what produced the uh, Roman Catholic Church. And uh, to maintain this, they basically uh, went to war, and they were at war for close to 1,700 years before, uh, for 700 years, because it started in 1080. Uh, by 700 AD, there uh, they were on the way out. Uh, a new branch had broken off from them in terms of two two different directions, and that was basically the uh, Protestant Church in England, known as the Anglicans, and one in the Germans in the German sphere, uh, known as the Lutherans. This is uh, based on a monk called Martin Luther, and these were the two points of. Uh, what we call Protestant, the Protestant, Protestantism. Well, from there on out, you have a, 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 a almost continuous fragmenting of various different denominations. This includes your your fundamentalists, your evangelicals, this, the the Baptists. The uh, there was one called the Anabaptists. There, there was a number of different. Um, uh, splintering of the groups. And one of the groups, ironically enough, that you can sort of tie to the Christian line are the humanists. These are the atheists who took the basic foundations of what the church had created. So, well, okay, let's get rid of the church. Let's get rid of the priests. Let's get rid of God. And what they did is they said that, said that the priests were replaced by professors and uh, noblemen and wise men. And so this was was the, the enlightenment of the world. It was, it was a physical enlightenment. And you can see this in, in the change of cult, looking at culture. You see, see this in the shift in the art. This is sort of where, where uh, things were going, is that the first shifts in art it took about 300 years. Uh, so about 1300 AD, you no longer had the, called the, the omniscient eye, where you, the, the eye sees everything, including the spiritual. 
but rather now you have the perspective on that only sees the immediate physical. That, that this is sort of what we see with Michelangelo. This is what we see with uh, Donatello. And their whole view was to capture uh, what you see. <clears throat> so the perspectives, the ones who artists who became the perspectives, that sort of worked in the sort of concept of the physical realm, didn't stay the same way. They actually evolved. And you had a group called the Realists. These were ones who wrote, did their paintings in such a manner that it was... Um, uh, how should I say this? Not real. <laughs> this is trying to come in another way, but but it was only real in terms of the physical sense. They they never they sort of ignored the the, the spiritual sense. Then of course you had the the group that came out of this with the surrealists. This is uh, indicated by Salvador Salvador Dali um, and another a uh, number of the other. I'm called School of Surrealism. They always broke off into these schools, these academies and academics. And there was an oh, there wasn't just simply one. There was maybe one key fi figure, but a number of people grouped around, uh, grouped around them, just like what happened with Voltaire. And what happens is you have these things pop up. So initially you had uh, the modernists pop up. This is your basically the modernists were the humanists who. Saw the church as more of a nuisance than anything else, but took their structure and said, we're going to engineer society in our manner. We're going to succeed where they failed. And what you have there is you have basically the modernists taking the entire structure of the church and simply replacing that the, the, the structure of the church with their own sense of ideas. This is where we can, this is where the university became really key because they were able to sort of uh, of all things to a point where it appeared as if they were in full control, but that wasn't actually the case because you have to remember that Newton and Leibniz and even Hegel weren't academics, they weren't humanists, they were Gnostics. And this is where the Gnostic world, and most people don't actually look at the Gnostic world. And because a lot of people see the, they'll see the symbology, they'll, they'll They'll talk about different things here and there, and oh, you know, and this is where Lionel gets the thing about Satanism and evil and this and that. It's not that there isn't anything like that. It's just what happens is the common discussion is kind of like the common discussion we see now about any issue that has uh, more than one particular perspective from it. And this is why I say it's not a matter. And he he brought this up. He brought something up. Um, he brought this up, and this is something I've been saying for a long time now. It's not a matter of your own perspective. And the thing is, in many cases, you have to get other perspectives from people, even though you don't like them. <laughs> you may not like the personality, but, but, but what are they saying? How did they come to the view they came to? And this will give you a better insight into what you're working on. This is where my dreams come in, uh, in terms of what I'm working on, is because they give me other perspectives. I get to play characters, play people. Uh... That aren't me. I get to see through somebody else's eyes. <clears throat> you know, how does somebody else experience the world? If I'm in this, this situation, X, Y, and Z, how do I see the world? What do I do? How do I handle it? And this is what my dreams are typically about. There, there's this type of sort of observation and, and sort of, in many cases, interaction into a world that becomes. Uh, well, not my perspective. It's somebody else's perspective that I'm experiencing. So I see their world, well, in many cases, through my eyes. I see, you know, my eyes are there. I'm the one seeing everything, but it's their world. It's not my world. And how I behave, my emotions, my behavior affects how the dream typically ends. And not, they're not always pleasant. They're always not always a nice thing. Things could, do get in there. But what happens, is you, what happens is that the humanists who became the atheists, who eventually become the socialists, have a history with, within called the Western world. So the woke were saying, oh, oh we're, not, we're, we're not woke, we're no longer racist. Well, that's not necessarily true. 
the understanding is still pretty much white. You, you, this is where you have to get a, a global perspective. A global perspective is not one that is ignores the local environment. It means that you have the perspective of, let's say, well, to understand this, not all Africans are Africans. There are North Africans, South Africans, East Africans, West Africans, and in within there, even let's say let's, you go to Egypt, how many different tribes, how many different you know cities and cultures are intermixed in that one particular area? And this is what you sort of have to sort of go through and see how culture shifts, changes, migrates over a period of time before you really do get a good understanding of what's going on. And this is what makes it very difficult. Uh, because it does take an enormous amount of time. It's not something that happens overnight. and Because the, the absorption of the culture, the experiences of the culture, may be something completely foreign to what you're used to. But this is what happens. Is that This is where you get into, and this is trying to explain to some of the flat earthers. Is that I, I'm the type of person, I talk to everybody. I, it doesn't matter who I'm talking. It doesn't matter. I try to explain it. Explain some of the geometry because a large chunk of the early, the early, uh, uh, um, the, the the early societies had a very good knowledge of the night sky, and they did not view the world as flat. Where the whole concept of the Earth was flat came from was an interpret interpretation of older texts as they came through uh, both the Spanish Inquisition. Which was the, this is where you have the Crusades there, and this is where Spain was actually part of the Middle East at the time. Uh, this is where you have the Berbers, you have the Berber, the Berbery War, uh, and the thing is, you also had a sacking of libraries. This is the burning of the Library of Alexander in 800 AD. But the thing is, you had the same thing going on in the East, uh, uh, well, in the West actually. <laughs> the west of Egypt is where the uh, the the core of the Hellenic Empire is the Hellenic Empire was not in center was the core wasn't in Greece it wasn't Athens it was actually in the Middle East it was between uh, well this is where you get Constantinople well Constant Constantinople was the center of uh, the Roman Empire at the time and the thing is they they, they were Alexander uh, Alexander the Great had been in in, in Iraq they were aware of the Sumerians they were aware of the Babylonians. Uh, and all that entailed. And what happens is you have a sort of a, a progression and an in, in, in evolution of magic. These this, these are so-called the Gnostic world. And you look at their calendars, look at how they calculated dates, and this is how Newton and Leibniz sort of came out to be who they were, as they were, received the large chunk of these mathematical texts. They were all based within codes. And to work on the codes to really sort of get your mind around it. They had to break things up into smaller chunks and they said, well, you know, and started looking for the mathematics that would allow them to do this and, do this, and this would be calculus. Calculus was the, was the mathematics of fractions. And th this calculus wasn't invented by them. They simply used it. It was already there. So nobody really knows where calculus comes from. Just that it was used in the Gnostic sense to, to sort of uh, deal with... Uh, with problems that were so large, they had to be broken up into fractions and that you would never actually be able to solve the problem. You'd simply be able to approximate. And this is how they fundamentally work things and these things out. And the, but they also understood, and this is what sort of popped up later on, is you have these grid lines, the power lines of uh, planet Earth. And this is where this kind of jumps all over the place, with this, from the metaverse to all the other different things, you know, aliens and <laughs> the whole bit. Um, these ley lines seem to have a connection globally. A large chunk of we'll call these megaliths, these monuments built by these ancient people, all the see all seem to have an alignment uh, with this. These so-called uh, ley lines, in addition to having the alignments with the uh, uh, with, with the stars. They, 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 these were. Uh, Monuments that were constructed uh, with a, a um, very 
a sort of accurate knowledge of where the night sky was, how, how it set up, and they were done in line with the night sky, so you can go back in history uh, using your planetarium, because the planetarium uses the astronomical calendar, it does not use the, uh, the, the, called the, the modern calendar or the, or the uh, Gregorian calendar. He uses the older astronomical calendar, or something known as the Julian calendar. Uh, and they were able to roll the sky, night sky back, they were able to see all the different things, and, and of course, this was done, this sort of these, this creation uh, of the planetarium was done uh, by professionals, uh, by, by astronomers, who all use and this is the same thing too. That you both your, your all your launches, uh, your radio telescopes, your bigger telescopes, all use the calendar to uh, to align themselves uh, with the different skies, different parts of the sky that they're they're looking at. So what happens is that these telescopes now all have a connection because they're connected with the with the, with the placement of the dates. And I said date, the date is not an issue of time; it's an, it, it's an issue of where you are. It's degrees, minutes, and seconds. So you're dealing with not flat space or Euclidean space, but you're dealing with spherical space. You're dealing with curved space. Something that really is sort of beyond uh, mankind because we don't have a sense of anything beyond our physical dimensions. We don't really have a connection. Uh, this is sort of related in the sort of the, the stories of the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki were considered to be aliens. This is where you get a lot of your, your alien theories for, for the pyramids and stuff like that, that they were aliens. These people help these aliens help build the pyramids. They built well. They understood the ley lines, and the ley lines were far from being, you know, in terms of having that that, that universe. And the, 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 universe, the universe that they lived in, that these these Anunnaki, didn't have to be within the dimensions of Earth. They could be multi-dimensional. And this is where you have Stargate and so on and so forth. You have the world of the Avatar. All these things took place with the with with, with called the possibilities. Of the metaverse, the metaverse is simply the 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 structure of the universe beyond the parallel universes beyond our current universe. So, take the universe. This is our physical place where we are here. Anything the term, the term meta means to be beyond it. You're, you're beyond what we consider be our our call our sphere of realism, a three dimensional sphere. We're beyond that. We're in and in many cases our sphere. Even though we call time a geometry, we talk we talk about the geometry of time. Ge uh, time does not match up. The, the the nature of time does not match up with the uh, with the Euclidean space, with the x, y, and z axis that they, that the that the Cartesians bore, the Cartesians borrowed from Euclid and created the graph system, the uh, x, y, and z. This is what we know. You know, if you if you are a programmer and you understand of the grids of the, the grid lines of a uh, we'll call closed space or cyberspace. Most of your mapping within uh, uh, your programs are all uh, Euclidean. They're 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 basically uh, a flat space geometry. And this is this is how this is how uh, computers, which are which are basically a, a on and off calculator, deal. You know, this is how it deals with with curved space. It uses very tiny squares. These are the pixels. So we begin to understand if you look at the different components that, that you have the human world interacting with with something that is fundamentally beyond them, or the metaverse, or the meta world. Uh, and so what happens is that you take that you take your flat world, the world of the Euclidean geometry, and you do it in such a manner using calculus. To approximate the curved world, the world that's beyond the flat world, you know it's there. You see it's there. You see it's functioning, but there's no real way to get to the entirety of it. So you approximate it, and the internet and all of its spaces. If you understand the internet has a geometry to it, then you'll understand that the, that the included with the with, within that geometry. Are, are, are called n space matrices, where the n space ma matrices could be any dimensions you want it to be. It, it, it doesn't have to be restricted to one, two, three, four, five. It could be a variety of different things, and so you can actually replicate uh, in the sense of a graph, in the sense of well, this is what Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that. You can create a metaverse. You can create your own metaverse. 
uh, even though you don't necessarily you're not necessarily connected to the other metaverses, you can create your own metaverse and uh, have an existence within that metaverse. It just really depends on how you approach the the, the issue. Of course, there's a number of approaches, and I said this said this before that it was initially, initially uh, Google had got involved. That's that's what they and call it AG. And this is uh, augmented reality. Those were the Google glasses. Uh, then that kind of fizzled out. Didn't really work too well. Uh, and in came in came um, uh, these other Google goggles. These were the VR. Uh, these are the VR version of the thing. And though we're going to have augmented reality, but that didn't kind of work out. Uh, that most of those VR goggles are now gone. Uh, they're kind of difficult to find. And then from the VR goggles, you're now moving into the Oculus Rift, but you still have issues, serious issues with Oculus, the Oculus Rift. And this is, these are the VR goggles with basically a, a, a phone or some form of tablet uh, that will fit over the eyes uh, that creates a sort of a sense of... It, it, it's a screen that sort of understands the nature of perception and creates a view that is the mind views thinks is three-dimensional. In other words, it has some degree of depth to it. But what happens is because the depth is disconnected from our body senses, uh, there's a lot of issue with people throwing up, people getting sick, or people tripping over things because they don't know where they are. Uh, and so what happens, the initial experience, which is amazing, becomes something that's sort of, well, not so good because uh, it's not functioning properly. It, or it causes problems that were sort of not anticipated. And this is the way a lot of things are. There's a lot that's sort of not anticipated. But unless you go into ley lines, unless you go into all these different things, and this is what said, uh, going back to the whole thing with the flat earthers, there is an enormous history and archaeology but if you understood that, you would never have the question: if, Is the Earth flat? Is the Earth flat? Because you will see that this, throughout this history, that they calculate the Earth to be spherical, to be to be, to be uh, like a ball. And that there were more. There was more than just the physical, the immediate physical uh, uh, universe. That there was the, the metaverse as well. So now we've come to the point where we're now calculating the metaverse. But I guess this comes out of and sort of becomes okay to talk about this now because you can do this through particle part, through, through particle physics. This is through uh, the uh, superstring theory known as uh, M theory. This brings in the whole concept in terms of the mathematics and the science of the metaverse because now you have parallel universes in addition to Planck under quantum mechanics bringing in the possibility of the soul. Now you have the possibility of uh, parallel universe, and this includes the metaverse. So, this is how it evolves. And you see this well. Where do you see it? And Marvel and DC, but the Marvel and DC, uh, in terms of your comics, are dealing with the Hindu understanding of things, where everything is very simply concept. There's no reality. Everything is an illusion. So that there is no male, female. There is no another. another in other words, the the entire structure that was there for the modernists. It's now completely collapsed. It's not there anymore. There's no reality. And this is what we're seeing today. We're seeing the collapse of reality. And that's because the modernists based this stuff on what they considered to be reality, which was something that they were simply perceiving. There were elements of reality. There, there, there are indeed elements of reality. But the thing is, it's not necessarily what we think it is. So once we, once we understand this, then what happens? The intellect is overthrown. The intellect is no longer king, and the intellect no longer rules the world. And so, what happens? You have these now cowboys. I'll put them in this way. And this is what Edward Bernays was. Uh, he was a cowboy who dealt with his herd. And who went with the herd? The herd was human beings. This was under Wood Woodrow Wilson, 1915, and on. You had the development of a whole field that dealt with herding people into one direction or another. This includes a large chunk of the market. Listen to the market they talk about market report. What are they doing? They're trying to get people who are investing moving in one direction 
to the other direction, to another direction. They're hurting them. This is classic Edward Bernays. This is the bewildered herd. Stampede them here, stampede them there. And they understand us, they understand the crowd can be manipulated manipulated in terms of uh, the being dangerous. You can cre create a stampede and the and the crowd, the people become the weapon. So anyways, uh, that's it for now. Uh, Lionel took the night off. I, I didn't I took last night off because I was trying to sort of figure out what I was gonna say. These things get complicated. You need, sometimes you do need to repeat yourself. So some of the titles will be repeated. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the exact contents are going to be exactly the same. This is the reality of what we're doing. Anyways, uh, I will see you tomorrow night. I should have something worked up. I'll probably do some more on ley lines. And each monument is sort of the, the zero point energy. And this will get its, into aliens. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life.